What's going on guys? Welcome back to uh, our Arrivals of Ixalan set review. Now we're doing the green cards. And uh, we'll also be doing uh, land and gold and artifacts. So be sure to check those videos out as well. And uh, already up on YouTube has been uh, white, blue, black, and red. So uh, yeah, all right. Make sure to check those out as well if you guys want. And uh, you can check the old beard now. You can uh, smash those like and subscribe buttons as well. And uh, thanks everyone for watching. Aggressive Urge, one and a green. Target creature gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. And draw a card. I don't hate this card. So the thing about combat tricks in limited is funny because uh, a lot of times plus one plus one is all you need uh, as evidenced by cards like Subtle Strike. And uh, the fact that you can draw a card for two mana is really good. So you're gonna probably trade with something or kill something and also draw a card. So if you block their three three with your two two and then you play aggressive urge on it and you draw a card, like you're basically just trading. It's one for one because this is replacing itself. It's not bad. Uh, you're not going to be playing this in Constructed because it's two mana. but And it's just a plus one, plus one draw card. But I do like... I don't I don't hate it as a card. I think it's good and limited. So I, I definitely play one. Cacophodon. This guy is probably a little sick. A little under the weather, apparently. Uh, four mana for a 2-5. Enrage whenever it is dealt damage. Untap a permanent. It's, it's not very exciting. Like... You're, you're looking at they block it with a 3-3. You get to untap your own Cacophodon. So it's a it's just a 2-5 a Vigilance. Um, I don't know. I guess you can untap something else. You can untap a, an artifact or a land or an, a, different, a different creature. Maybe something that can untap. Uh, this is good in conjunction with the blue enchantment that taps down your guy and it doesn't untap. It just gives you a free untap with this, uh, which is fine. But, I mean, I mean, the stats 2-5 for 4 is not bad. You're going to play this in limited, I think, just because of the stats and the ability is unique. Uh, never going to be constructed playable, I don't think. This guy's a cutie. 2-1 uh, for 2. When it dies, you may cast dinosaur spells this turn as though they had flash. And whenever you cast the dinosaur spell this turn, it gains when this creature enters the battlefield. It may, have, it may fight another creature. So basically, this guy dies. The next spell you cast... Uh, you're probably not going to cast more than one it has flash. So that's cool. And uh, it's a 2-1 for 2. Gives you an X-Guy flash and a free fight if you have a dinosaur. If you don't have a dinosaur in hand, that's pretty bad. But I can see this guy even making it in like, an instructed dinosaur list. If you play this guy on 2, they kill it. The, the problem is that it's hard to uh, engineer when they kill it. So whenever they kill it, you can cast the dinosaur spell and it fights a dude, right? So if they kill it on your turn, you can still just, your next dinosaur fights something, right? So they go kill it, you go rip, tie, rip draw raptor, fight your guy, draw a card. Probably kill your guy too. Actually, I mean, this isn't bad. It guarantees that whenever it dies, you're going to play a dinosaur in the same turn, if you have one, and probably kill something else. I, I think this card's good. I like this card a lot. Whether it's going to see play, I don't know. I think it's... In Limited, it's definitely dependent on how many dinosaurs you have. And in Constructed, um, it could be good. Uh, I like this set a lot. I don't think it's true that the set can be summed up in one word. Bad. I don't think so. I like this set. Colossal Dread Maw. <sighs> okay. Crested Herd Caller, 5 mana for a 3-3 three, three Trample. When it enters the battlefield, create a 3-3 three, three Dinosaur. Well, this is actually pretty good. I mean, this is just a poor man's Registar Alpha, right? For 5 mana, you're getting a 3-3 three, three instead of a 4-4. Four, four. It has Trample instead of Haste, but you're still making a Dinosaur. This is like just basically Registar Alpha Light, right? Am I missing something? They both make 3-3s three, with Trample. Yeah, instead Registar Alpha gives haste to your other guys. This guy has Trample instead. So, I mean, yeah. I mean, sure. Yeah, Registar gives haste to other guys. This guy gives. Tr this guy just has Trample. So, I don't know. I mean, obviously Registar Alpha is better. Uh, this is just basically another version of that. You're still going to play this in the mid 100% of the time. 
Like it's two three threes for sit for five mana, both of which have trample. Sure. Not I mean you're never gonna play this over registrar alpha and constructed though. Deep root elite. Uh, two mana for a 1-1 Merfolk Warrior. Whenever another Merfolk enter the ba- enter the ba- enters the battlefield, put a 1-1 counter on Merfolk you control. This card seems amazing. If there's a blue-green Merfolk deck in standard, which I think there very well might be, uh, this guy's going right into it. Yeah, this guy's awesome. Enter the unknown, one mana. Target creature you control explores. You may play an additional land this turn. So this is just basically uh, explore, right? Like... A creature explores if it's a top if it's if the top card's a land you're drawing a card and putting a second land into play. So, for one mana, this is basically the same as explore, except you can't cast it until you have a creature. So if you don't draw if you don't have a creature until turn three, you're, this is basically a card you're going to cast on turn three. Um, I don't know if this is any good. I mean, I wish it was an instant. Like then it's at least it's a combat trick. I mean, but then, like, you, you playing additional land, and then you, you can't have you may play an additional land this turn on it. You have to word it differently. Like, if it's your turn, you may play an additional land. I don't know. This card's hard to evaluate. Um, I think it's just, like, this is a card where, like, you can't play it until you have something else, so it's always going to interrupt your curve in some way. You can't play it on turn one or two when you don't have a guy. So you're always going to have to play a guy, then play this. I don't know. Could be good. It seems really, it seems kind of weak for, for a card, like, it does let you draw a card if it's a land, and it lets you scry if it's not, and put a 1-1 one, one counter. I don't know. It, it, it's funny, because this is a one-mana card that does a lot of things. It does, it has a lot of implications, and I think that's fine. Forerunner of the Heralds. Four mana for a 3-2. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a Merfolk card, reveal it, and then shuffle your library and put it on top. This is just the Harbinger. Whenever another Merfolk enters the battlefield under your control, put a 1-1 counter on. This is like the best, that's the best secondary ability, I think. So this guy just keeps getting bigger the more Merfolk you play. That actually seems pretty good. Hmm. I mean, I don't know if this is going to see play as a 3-2 for 4. But it, I think it is one of the better heralds, if that's what they're called. I think they're are they all called heralds. I don't remember. But I mean, the fact that it gets bigger every turn is pretty good. Galta Primal Hunger. I don't think this is a good Elder Dinosaur. <sighs> twelve mana for a twelve twelve. It costs X less to cast, where X is the total number of creatures you control and has trample. This is the definition of win more, right? Like you have twelve power worth of guys. And you're like, oh, it costs two mana. But you already have 12 power worth of guys. Uh, I don't know. Like, I mean, this is like this is a card that like it's win more, but it also seals the deal. You're like, hey, I have 12 power. You have three creatures. You can block four, three of my guys. Um, so you're only going to take eight next turn. Let's say you're at 15. This guy's going to come down as a 12 toy. He's going to seal the deal. Right, but he does require you to be pretty pretty well positioned on board, I think. So it's a really awkward situation where it's like, do I want to commit a 12 12 to a board that I'm already way ahead on? It's only good when I am I'm way ahead. Like it's only it's only cheap when I'm way ahead, otherwise I'm paying 12 mana for it. So it's this real awkward tension this card has where it like wants you to to play it into a really, really full board, but you have a really, really full board at that point. But I mean, it's still it's still a twelve twelve trampler, so I don't know. It also it just dies to Doomblade. Hate to say it. I mean, this guy is no Carnage Tyrant. I would I mean, would I rather be playing Carnage Tyrant? Probably. Who knows? Guilt Grove Stalker, two mana for a two one. It can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less. Okay. It's a Merfolk. It's got an ability. I mean. We've seen this ability tons of times. Eh, okay. Not exciting. Hardy Veteran, 2-2 two, two for 2. As long as it's your turn, it's plus O oh, plus 2. So on your turn, it's a 2-4. Well, not ideal for blocking, unfortunately. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's a human warrior. It's not a pirate. It's not a, a merfolk. This is an interesting card because it doesn't have any tribe. 
You belong to no one. Yeah, I mean, you'll play it in limited. You're never going to play it in constructed. Hunt the week yet again. Wow. <laughs> Put a 1-1 counter on target creature you control, then that creature fights the target creature you don't control. Was this in... Was this an Ixalan? No, it was in Kaladesh and it was in Iconic Masters. Okay. That's where I remember it from. Wow. That's weird. It was just in Kaladesh. It's like two sets ago, three sets ago. Four sets ago. Five sets ago. Jade Bearer. 1-1 one, one for 1. When it enters the battlefield, put a 1-1 one, one counter on another target Merfolk you controlled. This is interesting because it says another. So it's like, it's a 1-drop, but is it really? Do you ever want to play this on turn 1 when you have no other creatures? Probably not. So it's not really a 1-drop. And like, on turn 3, are you going to play it along with a 2-drop two, two and then put a counter on that and have a 1-1? One, one? Doesn't seem great. Yeah, there's also... Isn't there Savage Stomp? What's the other one? Isn't there a bunch of fight cards in this set? There's like already two. I'm going to look it up. Because I love you guys. There's Pounce. There's Pounce and Savage Stomp. Yeah, there's Pounce, Savage Stomp, and Hunt the Weak now. That's a lot of fight cards in one set. Jadecraft Artisan. Oh, my favorite kind of artisan. I love a, I love a good artisanal Jadecraft. When it enters the battlefield, target creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. As a three, three for four, it's just fine. You're going to play it in limited. Never going to play it in constructed. Jade Light Ranger, two, one for three. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, it explores and it explores again. Eh, two explorers, cool. Um, I like the combinations of this. So it can either be a 3-2 for 3 that draws you a land. It can be a 2-1 for 3 that draws you two lands. Or it can be a 4-3 for 3 that lets you scry twice. This card seems good. Like the variety that this, this offers you seems very good. And uh, I think that's fine. Um... Yeah, it's nice that this card doesn't require anything else. Like, it doesn't, you don't have to have a merfolk. You don't have to have things to put counters on. You don't have to, hold, you're not, if not like, oh, reveal something from your hand. It's just a, a two, one for three that does two, two reasonably, reasonably powerful things. And uh, I think that's fine. I think this card's good. Jungleborn Pioneer, two, two for three. When it enters the battlefield, create a one, one blue merfolk with hexproof. Uh, this card's great. Like, if you guys played Glint Sleeve Siphoner, I think that's what it's called. Glint Sleeve, what's his name? from uh, Kaladesh. It was a 2-2 two -two that made a 1-1 one -one servo, or it could have been a 3-3. Three -three. This is just a 2-2 two -two that makes a 1-1 one -one blue Merfolk with Hexproof. And there are definitely more synergies with Merfolk than there are with um, than servos. So this card seems great. Yeah, I like this card a lot. Obviously, I'm talking about limited. Um, this is not a constructed card, unfortunately. Uh, I feel like the, most of these set reviews have been geared at constructed because that's uh, the format that I'm definitely more familiar with 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 uh, with like standard evaluations or you know constructed evaluations before a set comes out. And then after I play the limited format quite a bit, I get I get a lot more limited impressions. Uh, four mana for a two four dinosaur dinosaur spells you cast cost two less to cast. Why not dinosaur spells cost you two less to cast? Why dinosaur spells you cast? If it says cost two less, cost you two less to cast, like you're still indicating that it's them, not someone else. Why does it have to say cast twice? That's interesting to me. Dinosaur spells cost you two less to cast. And then you just get to omit a word. Either way, this card's fine and limited. You're going to play a 2-4 for four, four that can let you play... Uh, a six drop early or a seven drop early, so. But again, you're not playing two four for four and constructed. No, no, no way. No Surrey Bob. Naturalize. You guys know what this does? Okay. Orezka Frillback, four two for three. This is literally the red guy, but now it's green. There was a four th four two for three red guy. Now it's a four two for three green guy. I guess. I guess. I guess. <laughs> I guess. All right. Overgrown Armasaur. Uh, Overgrown Fred Armisen. 
Five mana for a 4-4. Four, four. All right, that's the key. Enrage, whenever it is dealt damage, create a 1-1 one, one Sapperling creature token. I like this guy a lot. This guy seems great. You could, you just never want to attack into this guy unless you're killing it. And then even then, they get a 1-1 one, one out of it. Yeah, seems fine. I mean, again, never playing this over something like Registar Alpha and Constructed, but... Four mana, whenever a creature enters battlefield under your control, it explores for a rare path of discovery. Is this what we want to do with our four mana enchantments that don't do anything when they enter the battlefield? And if you actually don't have any creatures, does absolutely nothing. And even if you have creatures, really doesn't really do much. I don't think so. Um, so no. Negative. Not a fan. Plummet. Do you guys know what Plummet does? All right. Sounds good. Polyraptor. Uh, as opposed to Mono Raptor. Eight mana for a 5-5. Five, five. Whenever it's dealt damage, create a token that is a copy of this. I like this card a lot. I think eight damage is a lot. Or eight mana is a lot. I also think that it's... This ability is strong enough that I don't know how much you could cast... You can cost this at to be more reasonable. Like, I don't know if seven is too cheap. I don't know if six... Six is definitely feels too cheap for this. Um, I, I agree with you. I wish the, the card was lower CMC. But on the other hand, like... You can't kill this with damage based removal. If you even if you have something that deals five damage to it, it's you still make a copy. So it has to be something like, you know, a, a path to exile like card. Which is kind of scary when you think about it. So I mean you have to price this at such a point where your opponent really has to work to play this card. Um otherwise it's just very, very good. I haven't done any of the drafts online. I don't want to play pay 30 tickets to play in the pre pre release on Magic Online. So I'm just gonna play some limited tomorrow. Uh, which is going to be Sunday. Not sure when this is going up on YouTube. Probably Tuesday, I think. So uh, the set will be out, and I will be doing um, Rivals of Ixalan draft starting on Monday, so be sure to check that out. Give me a follow uh, or a sub on Twitch if you guys can, and uh, I'll see you there, hopefully. Otherwise, I like this card a lot. I think it's a super cool design. Um, but it's not particularly unique. And it's also almost priced out of standard play. I can see you putting this in the graveyard and then reanimating it with Scarab God. That seems like pretty cool interaction because then you're just still making tokens. Um, so keep that in mind. Strength of the pack. Six mana. Put two one one counters on each creature you control. This is a super strong card. Um, but I mean, it's a sorcery. It's it's basically like an overrun. It's an overrun that costs one more, and uh, you get one less power, and you don't get trampled. But the power is permanent, right? So could be good. Um, it's definitely this is a, this card is insane and limited. Uh, it's definitely going to be a blowout. Um, so when I say could be good, I mean it's definitely good and limited. I don't think it's going to be... You're not going to be paying six mana for this in construct. I don't think you're just going to be playing another guy. But then again, if you're playing... If there's some kind of strategy that has like a bunch of 1-1s... One maybe? I don't know. Like, it's weird because this card is strong enough that maybe there's a home for it. But it's also really expensive. And it's not that strong. Right? Like, it, it does have its limitations. But there have been formats where Overwhelming Stampede or Overrun have seen play, so... I don't know. There's a, there's a lot of decks that could amass a bunch of vampires, and if you could have, like, a white-green deck that does that, maybe we got something, but I have my doubts because it still doesn't give them Trample. So, we'll see. Doubt I have my doubts. Swift Warden. Three mana. Ooh, for a 3-3 three, three with Flash, when it enters the battlefield, target Merfolk you control again. Hex this card's actually great. This card is going right into the Merfolk deck. Um, and talking for just literal hours is is hard. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this card's just great. 3-3 three, three for 3 with Flash. Saves a guy. It's basically a Merfolk counterspell. It's a Plax Manta for Merfolk. It's a Rattle Chains for Merfolk. And, uh, yeah, this card's great. I, I wouldn't be surprised. This could probably be a rare. Um, I think as an uncommon, it's going to be pretty pretty frustrating and in limited. Because Merfolk are already pretty strong as it is. And uh, this is probably first pickable. 
So, like, even if you have, like, two Merfolk, it's still a 3-3 three, three for three that you can flash in and eat a guy. Like, it's pretty strong. Tender Shoot Dryad. Five mana for a 2-2. Two, two. Ascend. If you control 10 or more permanents, you get City's Blessing, obviously. At the beginning of each upkeep, create a 1-1 one, one green Sapperling creature token. Sapperlings you control get plus 2, plus 2, as long as you have the City's Blessing. And it's a 2-2. Two, two. So, here's an interesting uh, correlation. Um... Let me show you guys something. There's a card in Elder Scrolls Legends. Uh, let me see if I can find it. It is called Black Marsh Warden. And I'll bring it over here so you guys can see it. Add an image. And I changed the uh, the guy here. So, all right. So here's Black Marsh Warden. This is an Elder Scrolls Legends card. I'm just going to put it right next to it. Uh, so four mana, five mana. Two, 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 two. At the end of your turn, summon a one, one. Okay, an Argonian Recruit. At the beginning of each upkeep, create a one, one. So you're both making one, ones. If you have seven or more Magicka, which is mana, Summon a 3-3 instead. If you have this, the, the City's Blessing, which is 10 permanents, summon a 3-3 instead. You're basically giving it plus 2, plus 2. These are very similar cards, are they not? So, um, yeah, interesting, interesting. Uh, this is uh, this is a kind of funny little overlap that you begin to see when there are so many digital popular digital card games in the marketplace, or, or you know, card games in general in the marketplace, um, where you're able to get these these ideas for things um yeah so pretty sweet like it's it's interesting to see this bard where it's like this costs one more but it makes a one one they both make one ones uh always and they make three threes if you fulfill a certain criteria so yeah just kind of interesting um but uh yeah i don't know if this card's any good for five mana it does nothing it's you put you're playing a five mana two two and then they just Oh, each upkeep. Yeah, see, that is different. There's also, there's a lot of subtleties in magic cards. Like, there's, uh, so there's, like, five different aspects of cards that become, that, that fluctuate in power based on if they say each or your, whether they say uh, every or once. Like, there's all kinds of different things. And there was a, the, the vampire, the bishop, in the white set review. I mentioned that he, he might not be that good because you have to have another vampire and it's otherwise it's just a 1-1. One, one. It can target itself, though, which I didn't realize because it doesn't say another vampire. It just says uh, give target vampire. So it can target itself, which is pretty huge. Um, yeah, but like Tender Shoe Dryad, you're going to pay five mana for a 2-2. Two, two. It's going to get to their turn if it survives. And uh, you're going to get a 1-1. One, one, and then it comes back to your turn. You're going to get a 1-1. One, one. I agree. This can trigger Ascend. This, this can give you the City's Blessing relatively quickly. Um, but then I like to compare this to a card like Consecrated Sphinx for one more mana. Where it's like, okay, on your turn, I get to draw two cards. And, um, I don't know. Five mana still seems like a lot for a 2-2 two -two that can be magma sprayed or shocked or abraded or lightning struck. Obviously, this card is backbreaking and limited, but, you know, constructed might be a little too expensive. Thrashing Brontodon. 3-4 three, for 4. Or 3-4 three, for 3. Sacrifice to destroy an artifact or enchantment. I really don't want to sacrifice this to destroy an artifact or an enchantment because it's a great rate. Um, so it's basically like, uh, you know, it's a reclamation stage that gets plus one, plus three. But you have to kill it when you want to use the ability. I mean, I'd rather just play... There's got to be something better than this, right? That Where you don't lose the guy. That's a paddling. Um, I don't know card's still good like you're playing a three four for three if you desperately need to kill an enchantment or artifact you can but i don't like having to sacrifice my creatures when they're on solid bodies i don't know then again the alternative is that uh you have a creature that uh triggers when it comes into play when it enters the battlefield which means you might not want to play it until they have an enchantment or artifact that you want to kill. Whereas you can play this guy as soon as you have it, get some damage in, and then you can play the uh, 
you know, then you can activate his ability if you need to. So, I mean, you know, it's, it's, there's, there's, there's pros and cons to both formats, whether it's destroy it at, uh, whenever you choose, or if it's destroy it when it enters the battlefield. So Thunderhead Migration. What in migration? Thunderherd migration, two mana for, an, for a sorcery. As an additional cost to cast Thunderherd migration, reveal a dinosaur from your hand or pay one. So this is the, is this the Silvergill Adept? Search letter for basic land card, put onto the battlefield, tapped, then... Realistically, it is a bad rampant growth. It is a three mana rampant growth when you're not playing dinosaurs. In the dinosaur deck, this is just rampant growth. Wow, this is actually impressive. Rampant growth is very, very strong. And uh, in a deck that you want to be ramping in, this is even better. This lets you play turn three Ripjaw Raptor. Wow. This is, this card seems fantastic. Oh my God. Like, you just play this in the dinosaur deck, which you want to be doing anyway. I want to be playing the dinosaur deck anyway, so having four rampant growths in the dinosaur deck seems fantastic. Ripjaw Raptor into Registar Alpha on turn four. Carnage Tyrant on five. Okay. I mean, yeah, this card seems great. I'm surprised because uh, R&D has had a strong stance against things like Farseek and Rampant Growth at two mana. Um, you can see, like, there have been three, at least, at least three different uh rampant growth effect probably probably four gift of gift of gift of whatever the one that gains you the enchantment that gains you two that ramps you one for three mana uh beneath the sands gets a land out of your deck spring of spring to mind um yeah this card's good i like this that's impressive i'm surprised wayward sword tooth Three mana for a five five. Ascend, you may play an additional land on each of your turns. That seems great by itself. It can't attack or block unless you have the city's blessing. I like this card a lot. Um playing this guy on turn three as a five five, even if you can't attack or block, is still huge. It's basically you're playing an enchantment on turn three, like a Corsair of Crufix or an Oracle of Moldaya. I guess not Corsair, but um What's another card? Gift of Paradise was the that's correct. The Gift of Paradise is the enchantment that you put on the land. Um Anyway, there's other cards that make you play two lands a turn. And if you look at this guy as a 5-5 five, five for three mana, that lets you play an additional land on each of your turns. It's pretty good. The problem is you need to be able to hit multiple lands. So if you have a way to like consistently draw cards, draw lands, this is great. Um, the rate is great. And if you're playing a deck that is geared towards getting the City's Blessing, I think you can really... Uh, but this got a good effect, so. Also unlimited, this card is also amazing. Like, being able to just play an additional land every turn is pretty insane. That's a huge tempo swing, and eventually you will get uh, the city's blessing. So. <laughs> uh, world Shaper, the last green card. Four mana for a 3-3. Three, three. Whenever World Shaper attacks, you may put the top three cards of your library into your graveyard. So I attack with my 3-3, three, three, put the top three cards. When it dies, put all land cards from your graveyard on the battlefield tapped. Oh, wow. I don't know if this is good. 3-3 three, three for 4 is not great. But that ability is insane. If you hit one or two lands and it dies, like you're still putting one or two lands into play. This is a weird Merfolk card, though, because it doesn't seem like a, a, a Merfolk ability. It doesn't seem like you're trying to ramp with your Merfolk, right? Um... It's still good. I think this is still great. And like this is a this is a, a perfect card for the uh what do you call it? Uh the, the decks who want to hit ascend or want to hit the city's blessing. Like it's still a 3 3 for 4. It still puts a threat on the board. And uh even if you hit a couple lands, one or two, you I think you still got value. If this card said if this is a 3 3 for 4 and it said when it dies, put a, a land onto the battlefield tapped. I think that's still reasonable. I think once you hit two lands with this card, it becomes very, very good. So if you can get two or three attacks out of this, it's very powerful, I think. I, I don't, I'm don't. i not sure 
if it's going to see constructed play, but I could, I could, I would not be surprised if there was some deck that was able to to do this. Also, if you're able to put lands in the graveyard before this even comes down, you still get to put those into play. So if you have two lands, if you have two evolving wilds in your graveyard before you even play this, you get two lands out of it. I, I think this card has a lot of potential. Like, and unlike Splendid Reclamation, this does have a body, and this also helps fill your graveyard. So I'm I'm kind of impressed with this card. I mean, 3 through for 4 by itself doesn't impress me, but the potential does. So, and uh, yeah, that, those are the green cards. Uh, green seems super interesting. I think it has some really powerful cards, some really, some really, green has seems to have a lot of build around me cards. Some are dinosaurs, some are merfolk. Um, but yeah, a lot of them seem, seem pretty fun. So I wouldn't be surprised if I was playing some of these cards in standard in the coming months. Uh, like I said at the beginning, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, you can slam those like and subscribe buttons down there, and it helps me out a lot. And I'll see you guys for the gold and artifact and land reviews next.